I need to make some uh, railings for this New York City brownstone. Um, I've already made the uh, side, the actual hand railings. These are made out of PVC. Um, I've drawn myself some really bad diagram <laughs> as a guide for spacing. All right. Um, I was kind of feeling this out if I wanted to do curved stuff or not. Um, but I decided to go simple just because I think if I go curved, it's not going to, and I go fancy, it's not going to match the rest of the diorama. So I'm going to go simpler and I'm just going to make sure the paint is really on par. I'm using baling wire. So I am taking it and I'm hammering it flat and then cutting it off. See that? I'm taking the rounded edge and hammering it flat so that it gives the appearance of hammered wrought iron when I eventually paint it black. I've got my cheap anvil here and I've got my flat head. Uh, this is a auto body hammer, but I just, uh, I took the wire and I bend it as straight as I could just by, 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 by sight and by finger feel. And now I'm holding it on here and hammering it out flat. See that it's round and then it's flat. And there's a little waviness in it, but I can correct that. As I hammer it, I can kind of set things back in place and it's still bendable even after you hammer it. It's still bendable and pliable. See that? It's already straighter. Marking it at two inches with a, just with a pen really quick because pen cleans off of uh, metal. You can just clean it off with some alcohol. And then snipping it off at two inches. And these are going to be the size of my uh, my rungs and my railing. Here, all I'm doing is making sure I am giving the hammered look an even density um, so that it's not super random, just random enough to look realistic. Now I've got uh, eight flat rails that have a hammered look to them. Uh, it's kind of hard to see because they're so tiny, but I'm trying to get the... The intention is for them to look a little imperfect. Flawless things tend to not look real. Um, I don't know if you've noticed that, but that's kind of a, uh, it's a obvious statement when you're dealing with the visual effects world. And that's essentially what we're creating here is a visual effect with our miniature. So if this was perfectly round and perfectly flat, it would look like a brand new building. And if you were doing a brand new building and you were doing like a commercial building or something, perfectly flat, perfectly smooth, pre-bought material would be an awesome choice. But I'm trying to make this look like an old New York City brownstone railing, railing that's been repainted, that's been weathered, that may have been dented and bent back, it's been repaired and re-welded. So I want those imperfections because when you paint them in and then you add weathering effects to them, it just makes them look all that more real. All right, so let's lay these out and uh, get them glued in. I've already pre marked and pre-drilled the holes in the bottom so that I have a little bit of a guide to put my railings into. See so yeah, how they already hold by themselves. I did these side pieces, uh, number one for the detail, but number two, it actually acts as a structural piece to hold things together. I try to engineer all my pieces so that they have structural stability. Um, so that, you know, if you were to grab something and pull on it, it wouldn't just immediately break off. Um, I think that's better for the longevity of the uh, art. I'm gonna use my 16th of an inch drill bit. Excuse my dirty nails, by the way, I just got back from camping. I'm gonna use my 1 16th of an inch drill bit, which is about exactly the right size to make a hole for the baling wire. And here's the thing. Yeah, there we go. So what I'm doing here is I'm starting to pre-drill the holes in my bottom rail assembly. As I start the hole, I angle that piece up so that the drill bit is going roughly into the bottom piece at the same angle I want the rails coming out of it. This will help me um, later when I go ahead and assemble things so that I'm not fighting angles or trying to bend things or tearing pieces of material away. Um, takes a little bit of patience and practice, but once you get the hang of it, it, it goes by very quickly. And as you can see, I'm moving right along here. This is my favorite super glue. It's Loctite. It's actually fairly viscous or thick, um, and it allows me to glue things together quickly without glue running all over the place. And I am using that template that I drew as a guide to help me align things while they're drying so I'm not having to take it on and off the piece. And I realized in doing this, 
I could take advantage of the wire that I'm using and maybe replace one or two of those rails with longer ones that actually go through the bottom of my rail assembly and into the sides of the steps. In doing this, I, I decided to go with three and a half inch long pieces just so that when I um, drill my pre-drill my hole into the uh, steps, that it would go a little bit deeper than an inch. When it goes in there, it'll go about an inch and a half. So that'll provide some nice stability to this. It's obviously not going to be like uh, bulletproof, but it will prevent it from if somebody bumps the railing or picks it up by the railing too roughly, it's not going to rip out or break off. It's going to stay there. So um, yeah, I'll go ahead and pull this one out and then add the other one here and drill all the way through. I'm just wiggling out that second rail. Uh, I realized uh, as I was in the middle of the process, this would be a good idea. So now I'm going ahead and drilling all the way through on that second rail position, as well as on the top rail position, we'll drill all the way through, which will allow me to mark, align, and drill the holes in the uh, staircase itself so that we can anchor the railing much stronger than just a one single blue line on the bottom. What we can do, keep this in place because I don't want to drill a hole have it slide up or down and then drill the hole in the wrong place. So let me get a nail really quick. Actually, <clears throat> I can just use a sewing pin. Sometimes I use these sewing pins a lot to hold things together when I'm dealing with uh, thin plastic and foam. Yeah, there we go. So now we've got that in there. So that even if I bounce this around, uh, everything is gonna stay pretty close to the same spot. Nice and straight, nice and centered. I usually eyeball center on small pieces. I don't measure because in the end of the day, it's gonna what's what's gonna look right to your eye when you're doing something. Not necessarily that it was measured accurately. And I learned this in my, my regular job when installing different products in homes. Even if you put it up level and square and perfect with a measuring tape and a bubble level, it may still look off to the eye. So sometimes you need to actually let your eye tell you where to put something and it will look better in the end. Sometimes measurements are actually not the way to go. Now, I should be able to just slide these through. Let me just test fit one of these because the hole's round and now I've got a square bar. There we go, perfect. Now I should be able to do it, maybe. There we go stab myself but that's okay i have thick calluses because i play guitar they come in very handy when i've almost stabbed myself and slipped myself open <laughs> okay we'll do this this is just a test fit too now i could slide this in there we go now i can slide this down look at that We've got a very stable railing, and the reason, another reason the wire is great is if, you can see here, if your wires are kind of back and forth like this, they're bent back and forth, you can just bend them straight. If you use wood and you glue them at an angle, you can't do that. We have to learn, we have to make mistakes, right? It's all part of the process. I'm just bending these all as straight as I can get them. They don't have to be flawless right now because I'm going to put another piece on that's going to help me straighten them too. They just need to be close. And again, I'm just I, I'm just looking at this with one eye closed, straight on, and eyeballing it. Again, I could get out a square and a level. I'll show you. I could I could get this guy out, and I could hold it up here, you know, and go up and down. But the thing is, I'm going to nudge these and bump these as I do this. That's the kind of thing I want to save for the very end, is getting all those perfect final little measurements in place. Use your eyes. Trust your eyes. I'm going to add another dab of glue, just to kind of solidify the position I put them in. This is the top piece with the pre-drilled holes. This is probably going to be the last thing to go on. Once I glue this on, I'll pull the whole thing off, paint it, and then glue the whole thing down. 
So in gluing the top on, I used a slower drying glue instead of super glue to give myself time to align things. Um, as I was doing this, I realized that some of my rails were sticking up just enough, like a sixteenth of an inch in a couple of places, that it was preventing it from going down level. So you see me with the ruler there, trying to determine which ones are sticking up higher, and then just nipping those off, realigning it, and getting it all into position. This actually took quite a bit of time. All right. Took some finagling, some messing around with. I realized that I shouldn't have glued these two sliding pieces. Um, because what I ended up doing was breaking the super glue seam and pushing them down into the foam lining and then having to trim two of these pieces because they were just a little too high gluing all the stationary ones down and then using my pliers and sliding up the other pieces now this will I can let this dry I'm gonna actually dab some super glue under here to seal these positions since that's exactly where I want it right now um, and then I'll start working on the other side I've completed the other side. See, we have two sets of railings. So now this is anchored through the diorama or through the staircase. And this is, so if I pull up on these, I can pull the whole piece off without damaging it. Look at that. Now I have this fully glued piece. So now I can sand this down. I can add more details. I can paint it and I can literally just slide it back in place. The next few shots just show some of the additional details I put on the piece, uh, the paint job that I did. I also made the side railings to match the facade and uh, accent the staircase itself. The client that commissioned this was extremely happy with the piece, which made me feel really, really good about the calls I had made in the process. But I'd really like to see what you guys do with these ideas and these uh, materials. If you go ahead and make any railing or use wire uh, after watching this video for anything in your diorama, please tag me in your post. I'd love to see what you guys do. I get a lot of inspiration from all of you guys, and uh, I really would like to return the favor here. So please share and like and subscribe. And when we get to a 1,000 followers, uh, I'll make a diorama for hopefully you. We'll see you guys around. Have a good day.